That's, that's great. Thank you, Beck. Um, so, yes, my name's Ewan, and I've been working at, at the University of Edinburgh uh, since January 2016 as the Wikimedian in residence there in supporting the whole university in teaching, learning, and research, how to potentially benefit from the free and open Wikimedia projects, but also contribute to them as well. So you and your students can dramatically affect the most popular and important reference work in the world. And our students have also created our website and 20 short how-to videos during lockdown that are available at tinyurl.com forward slash wiki dash UOE. These are open licensed how-to videos that are on YouTube. And we just want to break down the how and why of Wikipedia so that anyone can engage either in person or remote or um, embed these in a VLE if need be and do work inside and outside the curriculum because we've got a lot from Wikipedia, student activism and supporting gender equality in particular and that's what I'm going to sort of speak about today. Um, if you're interested in our in-curriculum work, we've worked with about 15 to 20 different course programs over the last seven years. And I should mention that I'm not a long-term Wikipedia expert uh, before this role um, because I was recruited for my teaching ability for to be able to communicate and have those softer skills because we feel that the Wikipedia technical skills can be learned in under an hour. So we want to encourage other institutions, other student societies, other further education uh, establishments, other secondary schools to engage with how information is curated, created and disseminated online. So we're adding six more case studies to our booklet of case studies. I'll bring us up to a nice round number of 20 that we're going to relaunch later in this summer once my graphic designer colleague uh, understands all the edits I've suggested. So uh, first off, why does the University of Edinburgh have a Wikimedian in residence? Well, one good reason is that Longboy has a page on Wikipedia. A celebrity duck in York has a page on Wikipedia, but thousands upon thousands of notable women still do not. So we need to change that. So that's one reason in itself. Uh, let me just move this bar. There we go. Another reason is uh, as the former executive director of uh, Wikimedia Foundation has said, let me just get rid of that again. Knowledge is alive and growing and it is most useful when it's used, not just static, but engaged with, built upon and expanded on. And like it or not, search is the way we live now with Google processing around 90% of the world's internet searches and Wikipedia as the largest open education resource in human history being preferentialized within Google's top hits then how knowledge is created, curated, contested and disseminated online becomes of paramount importance to a research generating institution like the University of Edinburgh that is wanting to support the sharing of fact check knowledge openly and walk the walk in that respect and not just pay lip service to that, but also support its staff and students in developing 21st century digital research skills, data skills, and a robust information literacy. Uh, we were founded in 1582, so we're one of Scotland's ancient universities, but our 2023 vision has lots of areas of convergence with the non-profit Wikimedia Foundation, which was founded in 2003. We want our graduates and the knowledge to we discover with our partners to make the world a better place. So it's about how do we do that? How do we walk the walk? And we want our teaching and research to be relevant to society and be diverse, inclusive and accessible to all. So we feel working with Wikimedia 
in a partnership to explore how teaching, learning and research can support this work with Wikimedia is of uh, a really interesting, fertile space to be in. Because Wikimedia's vision is to imagine a world in which every single human being can freely share in the sum of all knowledge. But we're nowhere near that. And nor should we be. We can work, Wikipedia is always going to be a work in progress that will always be striving to be the sum of all human knowledge. And I think that's a, a, a noble aim and a noble aim of education and sharing of in, uh, information around the world. We can get closer to that, certainly, by contributing knowledge openly and w universities should not be silos of information. As mentioned before, Wikipedia is one of the largest, if not the largest, open education resources in human history. And the, the information that is openly shared online is used by virtually every major digital intermediary that people, staff and students alike use on a daily basis, whether it's Google, whether it's Amazon, Facebook, YouTube, Siri or Alexa, a lot of the information is coming from Wikipedia's free to use information. And particularly with the growth of AI, what is on the internet that comes from Wikipedia spreads across the internet. So what's right or wrong or missing on Wikipedia can affect the entire internet as well. So that can be a positive and a negative if people aren't engaging and aren't evaluating the content that they are presented with, whether from AI or any of these big digital intermediaries. And as we know, Wikipedia has a women problem. It's well acknowledged that less than 15% of editors are female. One particular survey from 2011 put it down as low as eight or 9%. And that skews the content with fewer than 15% of the biography articles were about women in 2014. And with focused attention from projects like Wiki Project, Women in Red, that project, uh, that percentage has gone up to 19.55%. Still nowhere near gender parity. So we have to be very skeptical about the information that is being shared online when it's showing us that there are so many women missing from our search results. And we have to choose to challenge the paucity of stories that are being shared online. And not just the, in terms of the biographies, but who's being cited online as well, because a lot of women were found to be not cited on in Wikipedia pages in this particular article on Undark as well. So that's where we sort of started and so this is a quote from our IT director, Dr. Melissa Hyten, back in 2015, when she was looking at all the sphere of work going on in Wikipedia that universities weren't engaging with. And she wondered why, as an IT manager, people in universities weren't looking at engaging with Wikipedia. Because her, what she said was, in Wikipedia, we've created the greatest creation of the 21st century. And it seemed such an amazing opportunity to dem democratize information for, for everyone to participate. But we're already in a place where we've created a place where women are choosing not to spend time or contribute. So we need to be doing more. So we look to do more. We held an experiment, our very first Wikipedia editing event, and this is a typical a uh, Wikipedia editing event at the university where people in a social and supportive environment, often with cups of tea, coffee, biscuits, cupcakes, supporting one another and having conversations about how to create and improve pages. This was back in February 2015 and we were looking at what to what extent our staff and students could be supported formally and informally in the developing more of a sense of robust information literacy, copyright literacy, learning new professional digital skills. 
and writing for a lay audience. So, and if so, could this be useful in teaching and learning to support our open practice and our newly implemented open education's resources policy as well? So that was seven years ago since our first experiment with Wikipedia. And the, the topic of that day was to improve topic coverage of the Edinburgh Seven, the first female students matriculated at British University when they fought for the right to study medicine at the University of Edinburgh. And we made sure that all seven had their own page on Wikipedia and that the page itself about the Edinburgh Seven was discoverable and as up to date and furnished with information and illustrated as possible so that people could learn all about their struggle and what they achieved. And as Melissa says, the topic of the Edinburgh Seven event was particularly relevant because it was about of a group of women breaking into an area where they weren't welcome. There were cultural issues, but it also allowed us to think about and talk about not only Wikipedia, but thinking about the culture of Wikipedia and the history of our institution at the University of Edinburgh and our medical school and the fact that we now are in a, a, a privileged, happier place that we have so many, many more female undergraduates in our medical school than male undergraduates now. The learning uh, that we did um, was, it, because we're a research-led institution, we wanted to evaluate um, what was going on in these editing events. We invited Professor Alison Littlejohn to come and write a research paper about what was going on in these editing events. And the learning that we found was that the edithons were a reusable learning design that can deliver deep learning outcomes. They allow opportunities for professional development of digital open practice skills, and they allow you to uh, colleagues, staff and students alike to build networks of social capital and that time spent can be on these editors can be seen as an investment in gender equality, particularly when you're working towards uh, supporting your Anitha, Athena Swan initiatives. So the Edinburgh Seven now have their degrees posthumously, 150 years too late. And that, that shouldn't, should never be the case. We don't have to celebrate people 150 years after they've uh, sort of done some remarkable work. Uh, they now have a blue plaque commemorating their fight for the right to study. And perhaps we'll never know how many stop to read that blue plaque, but we know how many people are choosing to review their Wikipedia pages. 108,000 page views of Sophia Jex Blake's page to date, 78,000 page views of the Edinburgh Seven to date. And this little purple uh, navigation box at the bottom of each page so that you can navigate and find out about Sophia Jex Blake, Isabel Thorne, Edith Petchy, and all the others as well. And just as a side note, here's a lovely reimagining of a Rembrandt painting that hangs in the medical school now. Uh, this is a Rembrandt painting uh, reenactment called The Anatomy Lesson of Nikolai's Tulp. And the students are the ones that collected the posthumous degrees on the seven's behalf. But again, we shouldn't have to wait 150 years. We can celebrate women's achievements, their lives, their contributions now. and representation matters now. And it, and it, there is, we found, formal and informal learning going on in these editing events, and they can support graduate competencies of the kind that we want them to be imbued with. Writing is public outreach, copyright literacy, critical thinking, source evaluation, data science. So engaging as committed, empowered knowledge activists and making use of Wikipedia as a form of learning technology to engage with rather than passively consume, we find is really useful in our uh, graduate competencies. But one particular aspect is that, that Professor Alison Littlejohn came across was that learning becomes personal in these editing events 
triggering forms of agency. These discussions about representation and the gaps online are very motivating for students. The idea that their scholarship can plug a gap online and will have a lasting impact is something they take great pride and satisfaction in, that their work will live on and will have done some good. Because, as was mentioned in one of Alison's papers, here's a quote, it's an emotional connection. Within, I'd say, less than two hours of me putting her page in place, it was the top hit that came back in Google when I Googled it, and I just thought, that's it. That's impact right there. And that's my experience of working with staff and students is the, the pride and satisfaction and the real motivation to correct imbalances is incredibly motivating. So all of that research and that first experiment helped legitimate my joining the university in a one year part time position but we see it as a multiple return of an, on of investment, supporting our key institution commitments to improving public engagement risk research, to supporting open knowledge, to supporting information literacy, digital and data skills, and improving representation online and equality, diversity and inclusion. So in terms of all of these things, it helps us demonstrate that we are walking the walk and here's me going around as a digital skills trainer supporting colleagues at our Centre for Regenerative Medicine. But a great motive, uh, uh, something that can't be denied is that part of our residency and a large part of our work is about promoting knowledge equity. Because historically knowledge has been concentrated in the hands of a few and marginalised groups' histories and perspectives have been excluded by structures of power and privilege. And Wikipedia does offer a model of revolutionising this. And so we want to support that work and we've hosted over 70 monthly events where people can join us in person in a social and supportive environment once a month where I train them for an hour and then they apply those skills by writing a new page about the life of a notable woman uh, who's miss, mi been missing from our search results for too long and these are open to all and the next one is next Friday on the 26th of May from 1 till 5 1 till 5 p.m. because it's about not having an internet full of memory holes when you do a search online you expect the information to be there but there are so many gaps and so many silences um, an internet full of memory holes. Even this quote is from a blog article written by a colleague of mine, Amy Burge. That's since be I've since found that's become a 404 f not found error. So that digital link decay is an issue. The, the gaps in the, the uh, archives, the, the problems of metadata in archives, the problem that a lot of books have not been digitized yet these are all problems but we can edit that's what that image of rosie the rivet is showing wikipedia is not the only place women are absent their place in the english literature canon is far from established but adding to content to wikipedia about these women is something high impact and low effort that i can do to make a difference now in fact it's probably something we should all do after all we all use it right so even though Amy Burge's article has gone, her quote still resonates. And we can celebrate uh, women in science, technology and engineering and maths, women that are doing amazing work and so that we, their lives and contributions are, can be read by and discovered by everyone around the world and they can inspire other people to undertake work in those fields as well. And we can work with staff, colleagues and student societies like we do every Ada Lovelace Day to create a more supportive network of empowered knowledge activists to support work in the STEM subjects. But we have to also have tough conversations. We have to acknowledge and raise important conversations both about the culture of Wikipedia 
and the culture of universities. Wikipedia rules by consensus, but how many people are involved in conversations about whether a page is notable or not and whether it should be deleted or not can be a very small consensus. So engaging in those conversations and steering the conversations in, in more healthy uh, ways can help save Wikipedia from itself. And we also have to think about how diverse or not Wikipedia is and how diverse or not its editors are as well. But it's also looking at the other side of that. How, how does the university support academics? Does it celebrate their achievements? Does it encourage articles and profiles and updates to web pages that Wikipedia can cite? Does it help elevate its academics to enhance their reputation and the, the institutions itself? And if so, does it support them when their page on Wikipedia may be needing updated and they don't know how to do that? Or it needs illustrated and they don't have an open license picture? Or if, what if the page is worded badly? Or what if the, pay, the academic is high profile and starts being trolled? These are all questions for the modern university. There's so much more we could do. We can also hold diverse -athons, editing events where we encourage our staff and students to, to look in the libraries and archives, to look for global alumni, for example because not everything is online, far from it. And just encouraging that important work, we can change the way stories are told online and have something Wikipedia can cite in turn. We can create new role models like the Edinburgh Seven or the 19 women chemists who, petition, who had to petition the Chemistry Society in 1904 for fellowship because they wouldn't be allowed to be join the chemistry society or the center picture the eagle house suffragettes who would go to eagle house in bath in somerset to plant a tree to commemorate their release from holloway prison after they'd been uh, gone on hunger strike and been potentially been force fed and endured un unimaginable treatment fighting for the right to vote so these uh, women now have pages on Wikipedia, but we've also looked at Scotland's story of the right to vote. And we held a, a series of Wikipedia editing events in 2018 for Vote 100, focusing on creating lots of articles about all the women in Scotland, like Bessie Watson, the nine-year-old Scottish piper, and making sure that um, they were represented online so people could read all about the, the fight for the right to vote. And these pages didn't exist until our students on staff and members of the Scott Wiki community sat down to write these articles. And there's an example of one of our editing events there with a couple of student contributors. So that, and we've cr created this Women's Suffrage in Scotland navigation box so you can navigate from Francis Melville to Maggie Moffat to Agnes McLaren from Sarah Mayer and much more to read all about their, their struggles and also the whole topic. And we also created a Histopedia timeline on this big interactive screen in our library foyer so that students could interact with it and find out a bit more about Scotland's uh, campaign for the right to vote. And we have, there's a sort of example of me with the ar working hand in hand with our head of archives to cr show off our histopedia timeline that, so you can read their Wikipedia pages. And what's great is that other um, librarians, archivists and groups um, have contributed to this box that didn't this box didn't exist until 2018. But now it covers so many suffragists and suffragettes, some organizations, the historians and writers, art, art, culture and commemoration and more. So you can really go down the wiki rabbit hole. But it's not just creating articles because improving gender equality online is much more 
uh, a diverse and insidious task in some ways because the nature of the tax means that new articles are often have no incoming links from other articles and are only searchable from the Wikipedia search bar. That means that long established articles, typically about men, are extraordinarily well linked. Here's an example. Here's, there's a category on Wikipedia called people associated with the University of Edinburgh. And these are the top 20 articles ranked by the number of incoming links. So before you ever get to someone like Princess Anne, you will stumble across Gordon Brown, Winston Churchill, Prince Philip, Arthur Conan Doyle, and Robert Louis Stevenson hundreds of times more in the course of your Wikipedia rabbit hole work. And that's the top 20 pages. You, you'll not even sort of, JK Rowling doesn't even come close to the, to the top 25. So by changing the digital world, we can also help change the physical estate around us and create new heroes to populate our walls and our physical environment to change the pale male stale portraiture and statues around us that try to tell us that to be successful you need to be old white and male now i'm not sure i you can't be what you can't see but i think the point is there that having female role models and feeling much more included in your study environment your work environment can have a different uh, effect on you. So we've tried to create a lot, name a lot more rooms and a lot more, um, have a lot more portraiture around the university of some of our notable uh, alumni, but also Brenda Moon was uh, our university librarian for many years and uh, we, she didn't have a page until someone sat down and wrote it. But now we have our board meetings at information services in the shadow of the um, Edinburgh Castle in the Brenda Moon Room. This all helps. And we've also launched guerrilla tactics as well by mocking up fake blue plaques. Uh, and we were looking for people to nominate people that they'd written articles about. So, and then we went about creating them in our makerspace. So I'm really pleased that uh, Siobhan O'Connor, a lecturer in nursing informatics, has one for her heroine, Mary Chisholm, who was a war, war, war nurse born in 1896. And Siobhan's now encouraging more Wikipedia gender equality work at the University of Manchester. And we also celebrate our my, my old boss Anne-Marie Scott as she went off to join uh, the University of Athabasca so we were keen that she had her own blue plaque so it's about celebrating the contributions of the women in our contemporary lives as well not just the historical but it's also you can do more to just highlight newly created pages by nominating them for inclusion on as a did you know fact on Wikipedia Wikipedia's front page and here's an example that my colleague Lorna Campbell wrote she said I was chuffed to discover today that English Wikipedia's main page featured a link to sociologist feminist and campaigner for lesbian and gay rights Mary Susan McIntosh and Lorna confesses to being doubly pleased because she created the article about Mary at a recent editing event to mark International Women's Day here at the University of Edinburgh. So Mary went from not having a page at all to having a page that's been read by 20,000 people since it was created. And you'll see there's a spike around about the 5th of March 2017 where she got about 7,000 views in one day because her page was highlighted on Wikipedia's front page. Another thing you can do is uh, the case study of work we've been doing in the curriculum is work with history of art students to improve coverage of non-Western art in Wikipedia because representation here matters too. 
so that even if you don't know about the visual culture of the Umayyads in Syria, and we now have an article about the Umayyads of Syria, thanks to our students, you will still encounter images, beautiful images of Islamic art on high level, high traffic pages on Wikipedia about things like inkwells and pitchers and jugs and bowls and earrings and more. So we want people to stumble across this information, not just have to find it out by ferreting in the search bar. So uh, one quote that uh, came from the students and staff on that course was, our experiment imply our knowledge outside the classroom gave us a sense that we were creating something positive, something that mattered. As one student commented, really love the Wikipedia project. It feels like my knowledge is actually making a difference in the wider world, if in a small way. But we're looking at other ways to support students, not just in curriculum or digital skills workshops or one-off events for Ada Lovelace Day. One of our projects was to work with on a student experience grant project called Recovering Histories, where we employed three student researchers one day a week for 14 weeks to research and target improvement in the LGBTQ plus history, gender history and black history particularly where Edinburgh and Scotland had a strong story to tell. The students researched their topics thoroughly for 13 weeks and then held a hybrid end of project editing event to crowdsource all the edits, but also to help raise awareness of what more could and should be done. Because I don't think we're ever going to be at the point where we're the sum of all human knowledge, but there's more work that could be um, in encouraged and targeted and celebrated. And coming to the, the end now, so one of our latest initiatives is working with the Careers Service to have a new Edinburgh Award to accredit students for work they do outside of the curriculum. And this is a project called Digital Volunteering with Wikipedia that runs for 55 to 80 hours from October to March. 10 students undertook this project work to impactfully improve three graduate attributes of their choice and an area of Wikipedia that could stand to be improved. And we held an end of project showcase of their 10 projects at the end of March, uh, where they outlined the, the approaches they'd taken, their project outcomes and their reflections. So if you think about this, 10 students have contributed over 75,000 words it's about 7,500 each, and they've had 3.3 million page views so far, create, researching, creating new articles about the witch hunts, modern witch hunts in India and Papua New Guinea, the history of menstruation, francophone literature, and LGBT, LGBT, LGBTQ2 plus history and women of the MENA region. And Eleni, who wrote about women of the MENA region, has since said that all of the women writers that are on her, her um, reading list now have a Wikipedia page so that when the students come back next September, they'll see that all of those Middle East women writers now have a Wikipedia page for the first time. And she takes enormous pride about that and has told her lecturer to make sure the students know that and appreciate that. But more interestingly, perhaps are the topics the students say to me that they want to write about, that they are motivated to write about. Climate change, COVID-19, LGBT uh, history, black history, women artists, women in STEM, underrepresented topics, some of the biggest and most pressing challenges in the world today. This shows me that students are recognizing and intrinsically motivated by the importance of addressing knowledge gaps and improving the world around them. One more example of a student's work was to improve topic coverage of underrepresented female artists like Helen Chadwick, who is just listed on Wikipedia as an art teacher. This is a picture of her on the top right. So she was just celebrated as an art teacher. So what uh, this student did was create new pages about her various artworks and got in contact with the VNA in uh, London to help illustrate the pages 
and she also wanted to create a navigation box, much like Damien Hirst has, to pull all of these uh, artworks together so that people would understand that Helen Chadwick was a, a, a notable and exceptional artist in her own right. And here's an art, another example of uh, another student's work where she's been researching women in astronomy and creating new pages about Louise Gray Young, Martha Locke Hazen, and contributing uh, almost 9,000 words about these women. And finally, it's not just Wikipedia. Wikidata helps students learn data science skills that are important for our digital economy and helps open up our research data sets for further research and inquiry so that historians, scholars, anyone could find out about this dark period in Scottish history and the human stories about the women behind this data. And having this information visualized on a map for the first time and localized on a map for the first time really seems to bring it home what these women went through and it helps to put a face to the suffering of these women like we, we contacted uh, the University of Dundee's forensics department because they this is the face of the only accused uh, witch in Scotland that we can put a face to Lilius Aidy because her skull was found in a grave in the beach in Torryburn in Fife. And n there was photographs of it at the National Library of Scotland. And those photographs helped to create this 3D rendering by forensic artists at the University of Dundee. So Lilius AD is a page on Wikipedia that I've written. And I've also asked for the page to be illustrated with her image. And now there's a film about Lilius AD as well. And now you can also read all about the other accused witches on our map, because we've got links to Wikipedia pages and we're going to launch version two of our website later this year, which is gonna have a lot more information about who named who and any accusations of demonic packs and uh, ritual objects used and looking at network analysis of who the most influential accused witches were or who the most influential judges and witch prickers were as well so final slide dr melissa Hyten says this project represents a clear statement by the university that we want to enable our staff and students to engage in becoming active citizens in the digital world. If you put your Wikimedian alongside your digital skills trainers and learning technologists, their impact can be significant. Not just their impact, but the impact of students in doing this activism and becoming active citizens in the digital world to make for a better, more representative internet. So when it comes to all of these big institutional commitments in the world we want to see and to live in, we feel that if someone says they can't afford to engage in this work, we say you can't afford not to. Thank you.